Shoes are designed to protect our feet, but what if they're doing more harm than good? I'm Dr. Aaron Horshik, and today in this video, we're going to examine what would actually happen if you ditched your shoes and went barefoot for an entire month. Now, the first thing you would likely notice is that your toes would begin to spread out. And this is actually a good thing in the sign of a healthy foot. You may not realize, but when you were a baby, your toes were the widest part of your entire foot complex. If you never put a pair of normal shoes on, like most of us wear today, your foot would look the exact same as an adult. And we see examples of this all over the world in populations that don't wear shoes. Unfortunately, at a very young age when we start wearing shoes, something bad starts to happen. Most shoes that are manufactured today are made with a very narrow toe box that cram and pinch your toes together in order to meet fashion standards that date back centuries. Now, if you don't believe me, go find any pair of shoes in your house and try this test. Take the insole out of any pair of shoes you can find and step on it. For many, in order for your foot, specifically your toes, to fit within the liner, the toes will have to be crammed together. Over time, many of our feet start adapting to this cramped position which is the main reason why people develop foot deformities like bunions. Now, while reversing this adaptation that occurs to bad shoes is going to take a lot of time, months and even years, going barefoot for as little as one month and ditching these normal shoes is a good kickstart to starting to see some of these changes. And if you do have to put shoes on, wear shoes that don't cram your toes together like many barefoot style shoes. The second thing you may notice after seeing your toes start to spread out a little bit more is that many people will start to notice less foot pain, specifically those dealing with plantar fasciitis. You see, when your big toe is pulled inward within a narrow shoe, a muscle on the inside bottom part of your foot called your abductor hallucis is put on a stretch. This tightening of the muscle leads to a pinching of a nearby artery that runs underneath called the lateral plantar artery, which then restricts blood flow to a very specific part of the bottom of your foot in most people. Now, poor blood flow limits the body's ability to recover from any type of stress. And if we look specifically at the foot, the plantar fascia is placed under stress anytime you're weight bearing, walking, running, or even jumping. In fact, we find in research that those who are barefoot more often actually have healthier feet with less risk of injuries, specifically plantar fasciitis. This is because for some people, the limited blood flow to the tissues on the inside part of the heel begins to degrade and symptoms of plantar fasciitis begin to set in. So despite what you may have heard, plantar fasciitis isn't due to inflammation, but rather poor blood flow to that part of the foot that starts a degrading process because your body is unable to adapt. So with a lot of my patients, one of the first things we do is talk about the type of footwear that they're in and getting them out of restricted footwear that smash and cram the toes together is the first step to restoring blood flow to the bottom of the foot and starting the fixing process for alleviating pain for plantar fasciitis. Now, as you start walking throughout your day without shoes on more and more, you're going to start to notice that your foot is actually becoming stronger. A big reason for this is allowing your toes to actually spread out and lay flat on the ground. You see, your foot was designed to have your toes completely flat on the ground when weight bearing. Because 18 of the foot's 19 tendons are attached to the toes, allowing them to remain firmly flat essentially anchors your entire foot to the ground and enhances foot function and stability. Unfortunately, many shoe manufacturers, specifically those who make athletic shoes, have an unnatural uplift to the front side of the shoe called toe spring. This up tilt to the front of the shoe hinders the foot from functionally optimally within the shoe because the toes cannot lay flat. Over time, this limited stimulation to the smaller muscles within the foot that control the toes can lead to weakness and atrophy. So just getting out of your shoes and walking around barefoot is an excellent way to kickstart strengthening your foot. You don't need any specific foot exercises. Just go barefoot more often. Now the fourth thing that you're gonna start realizing after you ditch your shoes for a while is that you have better control of your arch without a fancy orthotic. Now, while there are a very small percentage of people who do have a foot anatomy that requires an orthotic, the height of your arch, or lack thereof, is not a determining factor in foot health for a large majority of people. It's all about how the arch functions, not its appearance. Having low arches doesn't automatically lead to foot problems. However, having low arches in weak feet can. 
So a lot of people that think that they have flat feet often just have low arches that are very mobile and flexible, and they would benefit from things that strengthen their foot. For example, a while back I was working with professional strongman Travis Ortmeier. You can see here he has a fairly flat foot, but if I spread his toes out, notice how he actually has a small arch in his foot. So the position of your big toe has a direct connection with maintaining the arch size and function of your foot. Now, as you get better control and stability of your foot and a stronger foot, you'll actually start to notice you have better balance. Now for an athlete, this can be extremely important when it comes to performance. And for an older adult, this is key for reducing falls and therefore risk of injury. Now the last thing that ditching your shoes and going barefoot more often can provide you is the benefit within the gym. You see, going barefoot more often can enhance your foot stability, and better foot stability leads to better lifting technique as a whole. You see, when you cram your toes together within a narrow shoe, it's far easier to lose foot control and allow the knee to cave in as well. But if we're able to spread your toes out by going barefoot or wearing a shoe that mimics going barefoot, the foot can function as it was designed, maintain better stability, better arch control, and therefore less room for knee instability. Now, personally, I was really challenged with this years ago. I thought going barefoot within the gym was not a smart idea and potentially dangerous. It wasn't until I had a conversation with Chris Duffin. People were amazed by his 1,000 pound squat for three reps years ago. He performed this completely barefoot. He told me, Aaron, Going barefoot is a performance enhancer. I can feel 100% connected to the ground and feel every small shift that's going to happen in a way that you can't with shoes on. From then on, I've really gone down the rabbit hole of barefoot training, understanding the research, what it has to say, and seeing it in my own lifting career. Today, I only squat barefoot, and it has been a game changer for my ability to control my own squat, and I urge you to try it as well. This is also why I helped design the first wide toe box weightlifting shoe with tier for those who use a weightlifting shoe within the gym and can't go completely barefoot. It allows your toes to actually spread out, giving the foot the potential to be more stable and to help your body work as well as possible. The less a shoe does to the foot, the better it is for the foot. I realize that going barefoot 100% of your day is not reasonable for a lot of people. We're going out on concrete, going on hikes, you wanna be able to protect your foot from things on the road and bacteria and things like that. But I hope this video can help you realize the benefits of going barefoot more often throughout your day, even if that's just around your house. And then when you do have to wear a shoe, we can make better choices that allow our foot to function as barefoot as possible, meaning the toes can spread out, we find shoes that are flexible, allow our foot to move as naturally as possible. If you've never really gone barefoot before, I highly recommend starting slower than you think. Just start by walking 100 yards or wear a pair of natural barefoot shoes for just an hour the first day and see how your body responds. Simply increasing the amount of time each day that you spend barefoot or in a barefoot style shoe can have immense benefits. Now transition too quickly and you may push your body faster than it can adapt. So be smart about this, but I promise you the transition to going barefoot more often and wearing barefoot style shoes is something that I promise you can benefit your life. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Until next time. They say that. Energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching? So caught up in their egos, these people have.